Uh, bringing us the news that uh, steps are being moved forward uh, for those who are being forced to remove cladding within their homes. Let's speak to two people affected then, uh, Darren Matthews and his neighbour Mandy Sanu. Just two of those who faced bills of tens of thousands of pounds as a result of the cladding crisis. How do you feel this morning? Because as Lewis was explaining then, it's not going to go away quickly, is it? No, no. Because uh, it was like, how many years is it going to take still? Because uh, we didn't know before, and now uh, we still don't know. So until the plans are in place and we've got more details, uh, it'll, we need clarification. Yeah. What have these years been like? It's been very stressful. And it, uh, I can't tell you, don't sleep, don't eat. Darren makes sure I eat every day. It checks up on me, bless him. Oh. So, um, yeah, it's one of them at the moment. Because you're, you're in adjoining flats in Manchester we're, in the same building? We're, we're in the same development. Um, we're a couple of floors apart. Yeah. So, so Darren, um, talk about the, the emotional turmoil you, you're going through. Potentially, what, what, what have you been looking at in terms of cost, the financial side of this? What in were you expecting? Of, yeah, in terms of cost so far, we've had bills for 101,500 per apartment. We wow. have had meetings with our freeholder, and at the moment, actions on hold pending the announcements by Mr Gove, which we do welcome cautiously. Because your apartment block, your, your block of flats, comes within this, this bracket. Under so the new bracket. We're 13.5 we're metres, we're in the new category. Um, prior to the announcements that are being made, our only option would have been to take out a loan under the new scheme, which in real terms would have cost, cost us £101,000 plus interest, and it would have taken 161 years to repay. Gosh. So, so, so basically, you, you thought you were going to have to pay for it yourselves as residents. Yes. This potentially means the developers will have to pay the bill somehow. But as Lewis was just explaining there, we've heard from developers this morning, there are many questions about whether that's going to be possible. I mean, whether they've got the money to do it themselves, whether they're going to agree to do it themselves, and the knock-on for the housing market. I mean, what, what, are you, what are your thoughts then as you hear this change? Um, a bit... I can't say the words. Perplexed. Yeah. And That's what uh, neighbours do, isn't it? Yeah. I'll out with a cup of tea and a word. I, like that. I love that. So you say, you say, so you're a little bit yeah. suspicious, maybe, yeah, of whether very, things will move forward. Very, yeah. Do you feel like I've been here before? Yeah, because we've not had any good news for a long time. Um, so until action is actually taken, um, I won't believe it until I see it sort of thing. But I guess the government is now saying, ultimately, you won't be paying it. And so if anybody knocks on your door or that letter arrives, that layer of anxiety is removed. It just left a layer of anxiety, but there's no absolute clarification in right. how developers are going to pay, whether they're going to pay. The, from what I understand from Mr Gove's statement, he's asking for voluntary contribution. With the best will in the world, this issue isn't going to be resolved on a voluntary basis. It has to be enshrined in law. It has to be with legal obligation, with proper stipulations to the building industry that they have to pay. Leaseholders are the only innocent party in this. Freeholders and developers are ultimately responsible. We know that successive housing ministers have said that and that leaseholders are not responsible. They have to put it in specific ways that developers are going to pay in the same way that they had the Victoria model in Australia where leaseholders were left alone and any negotiations for rebuilding and repairs were between the developer, the freeholder and the government. Do you understand, because we've had a statement from Irwell Valley, the management company, yes. they say they sympathise, safety of residents is their main priority and as with many businesses they will say, we followed the rules at that time, we can't shoulder this cost. Do you understand that? I understand that, but why should we? Yeah. We didn't build them. We didn't give them the specifications, we didn't give them design. We bought those properties in good faith that they'd met safety standards, that there were fire breaks, that we were moving into safe, secure homes that we're paying reasonable amounts for. Years down the line, we're finding out that there are no fire breaks, there are a number of fire safety issues that we're being expected to pay for. So, sum it up for me. In your block, 
today when you all see one another and chat? What's the mood going to be like this morning compared with this time yesterday before you heard about this change? Cautiously optimistic in yeah. my point of view. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're a step forward. Okay, a step forward. Thank you both very and much indeed. And you've developed a great friendship. That's a tiny positive yeah. to take from it. I'm sure lots of you have. Thank you so much. And Mandy you've got Sandy. a lift here, one of you. Yeah. Who drove? No, we've got no. You've got a cab? Oh, oh that's yeah. nice. Share the cost. That's great. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's check in with Matt for...